from last year and a lot of elements that were uh, uh, carried forward in the last uh, 10 years really of um, BRICS existence uh, and which is where uh, the leaders focused on. As far as our own Prime Minister's interventions both in the restricted and uh, uh, the plenary sessions are concerned, I thought I will just quickly uh, share with you some of the broad and the more important elements that Prime Minister had to say during his interventions uh, in his interaction with the leaders. Uh, so really broadly speaking, our, our Prime Minister gave a very futuristic, uh, forward-looking, uh, transformational uh, blueprint for BRICS uh, for the next decade. And I'd like to just share this quote uh, that he stated in his plenary speech, where he mentioned that our leaders in the two generations of our leaders of our countries have contributed to the emergence and establishment of BRICS, and that BRICS has gained credibility, wielded influence, and spurred growth. And now, in the next decade, it is crucial that in an environment where we seek stability, sustainable development, and prosperity, the BRICS leadership will be crucial in driving this transformation. So really that sets the stage for the main aspects of our own Prime Minister's interventions. Uh, when he met the leaders in the restrictive format, he spoke about taking collect collective action by the leaders in reforming the global governance, where he said that uh, when the United Nations celebrated its 70th anniversary, we had missed an opportunity, but that we hope that when we celebrate, when the United Nations celebrates its 75th anniversary, we would be able to achieve the reform in the global governance. Another point that Prime Minister focused on was, of course, the reform of the Security Council and the IMF, which have remained unfinished agenda, as also uh, he felt that the BRICS should really be reshaping the global economic agenda, whether it is in a multilateral trading system or, or whether it is in other context. Uh, there was, of course, uh, an intervention made by our Prime Minister on countering terrorism, where he suggested a joint action, uh, a strategy for it, uh, and I will come upon it uh, subsequently. But in that context, Prime Minister also did mention uh, you know, money laundering, terrorist financing, cyberspace, as well as uh, proposing an initiative for the BRICS on re de countering radicalization. And in that context, he offered uh, to host an international conference on de-radicalization. Uh, there was another initiative that Prime Minister suggested, and that is uh, keeping in mind India's own experience uh, in uh, disaster resilient infrastructure and uh, offered to take initiatives in this context. Moving on to the plenary session, uh, now the difference between the restrictive and the plenary is that, you know, in the restrictive, uh, the topic really was focused on all the leaders on global economic situation, on the international economic governance, on international and regional hotspot issues, as well as national security and development. So Prime Minister's uh, interventions were made in that context. Uh, the theme for the plenary was practical cooperation for common development. As you know, uh, BRICS is really uh, functions at two levels. One is of the leaders where they meet annually and on the margins of um, uh, the UNG as well as G20, where they really coordinate, cooperate and consult each other on issues of global concern. And there's the second aspect, and that is about practical cooperation. And so the plenary therefore focused on that aspect of practical cooperation for common development, for people-to-people -people exchanges, and cultural cooperation, and, uh, et cetera. Again, this one is important because it picks up threads from uh, the Goa summit where India, as the chair, had announced a series of um, initiatives that were focused upon greater, enhancing greater people-to-people -people exchanges. And here, our Prime Minister shared thoughts with the BRICS leaders in deepening uh, BRICS partnership. Uh, and he mentioned, of course, the International Solar Alliance and where the NDB could, in fact, finance projects relating to the International Solar Alliance. Uh, a very important point, which is very dear to him, and the fact that uh, all the BRICS countries have uh, the youth dividend on their side, and there's a youth population. So Prime Minister suggested that we should be really, BRICS should be mainstreaming youth in all its initiatives. 
another point that Prime Minister made was that we should accelerate BRICS cooperation on smart cities, on urbanization and disaster management. He also uh, dwelled upon BRICS partnership on technology and digital resources as well as collaborative BRICS projects in this regard. Uh, and in this context, Prime Minister offered capacity building initiatives between BRICS and Africa. Uh, then he, of course, uh, as you know, NDB is a, a good success story of BRICS in the last 10 years. And therefore, he suggested building on the NDB and the uh, CRA milestones that have been reached in the, uh, in the BRICS context. And finally, of course, people-to-people -people contacts, whether it is in the context of tourism, cultural exchanges, film festivals, etc., was another element that our Prime Minister dwelled upon. Uh, keeping the theme of the plenary as well as the restricted session, all the other leaders also took the floor. And really, uh, at the end, uh, the Xiamen Declaration was adopted. Uh, the text of that is already put up on our MEA's website, so you can uh, access it to be able to see what is the substantive content and outcome of this summit. Uh, I will quickly run you through some of the more important elements. Uh, I did tell you earlier that um, uh, terrorism was an element that our Prime Minister spoke about, but he was not the only one. In fact, all the BRICS leaders came up very strongly in condemning terrorism in all its forms and manifestations, and you can see that being reflected in not just one, but several paragraphs of the, of the declaration that has been adopted, where the leaders have strongly condemned terrorism. And then they have also been able to identify and acknowledge the pernicious, the deleterious effects that certain uh, terrorist organizations, such as the Haqqani Network, jesh e Mohammed, lashkar e Taiba, and others have had. Uh, uh, and TTP others that have had in, 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 in terror, uh, in, in spreading terror across. Uh, the leaders also uh, called to make United Nations counterterrorism framework more effective. The BRICS leaders called for uh, greater efficiency in designation of terrorists and terrorist groups by UN committees and for dismantling terrorist bases of preventing movement of terrorists of terror attacks that had taken place uh, that were deplored all over the world, including in ter uh, BRICS countries. Uh, they called for a comprehensive approach to fight against terrorism. And uh, in countering terrorism, they did refer to radicalization, recruitment, movement of terrorists, blocking terrorist financing, money laundering, supply of weapons and drugs, and countering misuse of internet. Uh, there was also a reference to uh, a, a, a swift and effective implementation of the UN Security Council resolutions on terrorism and to make the implementation of the FATF standards on terrorism more effective and called to, on states to prevent financing of terrorist networks and terrorist actions from their territories. So these are very important outcomes. For the first time you would notice that there has been such a specific listing of terrorist organizations and the fact that uh, the UN uh, Security Council that BRICS countries should work together in facilitating listing of these under the UNSC. So those are very important developments uh, in collectively fighting this scourge. So there was this collective desire on the part of all the BRICS leaders to address the scourge and fight this menace collectively as a grouping. Uh, some other elements which uh, might be of interest to you, this, it's a biggish text, about 70 paragraphs, but each one of them is very important. We've uh, uh, gone through it in negotiations with uh, other BRICS uh, uh, member countries with a lot of deliberation. So everything that's in the, the text is important, and I'm sure you would be able to identify the important elements. But I thought I'd just uh, identify for you some of the elements which are also very important for India. For example, uh, there is uh, the reference to uh, the need for predictability in accessing technology and financing for expansion of civil nuclear energy capacity. And uh, I think you'll find it in paragraph number 15. Then there was this element about the establishment. You know, traditional medicine is an important element in initiative that was introduced by India at the Goa summit. And there was recognition about the importance, even as we, there is a whole formulation on the need for affordable drugs. 
uh, and health care. Uh, there was also a recognition for establishment of a BRICS long-term mechanism for traditional medicine to be able to build upon uh, BRICS countries being in fact repositories of traditional knowledge and traditional medicine and that could be developed further. Then leaders welcomed the establishment of a BRICS agriculture research platform, uh, again an initiative that we had offered and this would be established in New Delhi. Uh, uh, certainly our Prime Minister referred to it in his intervention about the need for addressing corruption and, and steps to uh, address issues of anti-corruption and of asset recovery uh, and of establishing the BRICS Joint Task Force on Disaster Risk Management. Uh, on the people-to-people -people con context, I've already referred to you about the BRICS Games, BRICS Sports Council, Film Festival, Tourism, etc. I think an important element that was uh, that will find uh, repeated mention in the text would be the reform of the of the United Nations, of the Security Council, of any way reform of the global governance architecture. So these are the broad um, uh, broad elements of the declaration uh, that I thought I'd share with you because there is a common consensus of all the BRICS countries that has come out with this very forward-looking text that will lead to uh, the future work of the BRICS. Mm, I'll stop here. I have, of course, Mr. Alok Dimri, the Joint Secretary as well, to assist us in case you have specific questions uh, on the outcome of the BRICS summit. Uh, the, the declaration has already been adopted. Uh, later uh, this afternoon, as you know in the program, there's going to be a, uh, a BRICS Business Council meeting where the leaders will also address the BRICS uh, business community and there'll be signing off four agreements. Uh, in the evening, there is a banquet being hosted by President Xi Jinping as the host and the chair, uh, in which, of course, apart from BRICS, he has also invited uh, five other emerging market countries. Uh, our Prime Minister will, in fact, be interacting with them informally at the banquet tonight. And thereafter, he looks forward uh, uh, to sharing his thoughts uh, in this outreach context, this BRICS outreach, you know, we ourselves had invited the BIMSTEC leaders when we had hosted the BRICS summit last year. And so our Prime Minister looks forward to sharing his thoughts on this, how we should move forward in, in, in the context of um, the global governance and how BRICS as a, as a grouping can make the difference for emerging markets and developing countries as a whole. Thank you.